going on YouTube so <laughs> welcome to car audio 101 with Dale driven film Dale to be more precise so right now I've already started tearing into this thing and this is what I call my cheap way of uh, putting dead in the roof I never pull the entire headliner down I never take all the pillar down but instead I just kind of fold it down and get this if you can get like maybe a foot gap between the roof and the headliner you can get in there and do your deadening like you want so as you can see it's just a really thin um i guess aluminum sheet metal roof and it will vibrate really bad also these little bridges aren't even connected anymore you can see that gap there um but yeah so all of that is what will induce a lot of vibrations. You can hear how hollow that sounds. So I'm going to put a layer, put a couple layers of that back here. Alrighty boys. I got probably fucking three or four layers on this roof. Uh, from, from the very back all the way to past the middle seats. It's, it's at least three layers. I still got a whole bag over there that I haven't opened and I still got this much left to uh, probably address the front. I think it's gonna have to have some up there too. This van just isn't built out of shit. That's pretty solid. I mean, it's got flex in it, but it's like you don't hear the vibrations, if that makes sense. So I think it may be okay. Uh, I got, like I said, I got like three or four layers. Plus I'm gonna put the headliner back up. This is like, this is kind of something. So that'll be like an extra little layer of protection. And I think the foil looking silver stuff kind of deflects the sound away. So I think that's what this silver stuff is for. So the beat should bounce off. Like I said, it's at least three layers from this point all the way to about right here, there's at least three layers. So the bounce up from the box will come up, hit off this roof part and it should make it travel forward. What happens after that is to be determined. But um, again, this isn't an SPL van. I just want it to not vibrate. Like it's a weird noise it makes. Some people know what I'm talking about, some people don't, but that's what I don't want. I know door handles, all that shit is going to, I know it's going to be some vibration, but it's this weird ass wow, like. And stay there. <laughs> <laughs> like an echoey sound that the roof can make, I don't want. So as long as I can get rid of that, I'm not worried about the rest of the vibrations. I am going to try to come in do something on the inner side of the rears. And I guess, man, I, I think that's just gonna be pretty much it uh, for that. So I'm gonna go ahead, try to get this headliner tucked back up, get all this stuff switched back around and continue moving forward, boys. Again, I do want to lay some on this side, but I still haven't determined if I'm gonna, I probably won't put the panels back because when you put that stuff down, you're gonna have to cut all these little like tabs out for where these mount. That's why you don't see any deadener on these pillars because I do want to put this back up and make it look a little stockish in the ceiling. But uh, that's why you don't see the deadener all the way to the side. And I know like some SPL like guru is like, man, you're losing hella 
like waves or whatever coming through the um the little holes and stuff but i don't care my main thing is the vibrations if i can cut that down on the roof i'm good there and we'll just go from there this should be a freaking knocking ass system but i'm really learning that this van is not made out of shit which is pretty much all hondas so yeah let me go ahead and get this headliner throw back up and we'll continue this install so pretty much all i did was measure uh exactly between these two little hump pieces and i just cut me a rectangular piece of wood to lay down in there and what i'm trying to do is just get the box to rise up to be level with those little pegs so that it doesn't lean back when you put it in that was really the only issue i had so i'm gonna test fit the box but it looks like it probably could use another piece really to uh kind of get this thing up high enough so what i may do i might not even because that's a heavy ass box so i might not even test it i might just take i got two little like slim pieces i may try to um use those well i got those two little slim pieces and i got that one fat piece i may put like one strip on each side and then that fat piece in the middle and just lift it up more again you're not even going to see this piece in the floor once the box is in except for back here but i'm probably going to spray it black but those little strip pieces i'm going to make sure i move those forward enough to where they're directly under the box so you don't even see them and i think we should be good to go or what i might do is screw the slim pieces under this piece to just elevate this whole piece all together I may do that and then it'll still be flush against the bottom of the speaker box and that'll give it kind of an extra layer of protection, I guess, as far as flexing goes. I don't know, but I may do that. I don't know, I'm gonna see how I do it. But either way, all I'm trying to do is elevate the box up some to make it sit flat when I put it in there. And that way it'll be perfectly level. When you look in there, you see the 415 just sitting flat at the top. Side note, I also got the hot wire ran all the way up through to the hood. It's like this van was meant to have a system in it. There was a grommet that I just popped out and there's nothing that goes in that grommet and this wire is almost the fucking exact diameter of that grommet. So great there, that worked out great. A lot of people will run two, three runs of, of wire to the rear my HHR never did that, and I don't plan on doing it here. I'm just going to do basically the big three up front. I'm going to run my one power wire going to the back, and then at the back, I'm just going to ground it several times in the rear. This is a unibody car, so all the fire is through the, throughout the whole chassis. So I, think, I don't think I need an actual ground wire from the alternator as well. I think I could just ground everything in the back, and it should be fine. So... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. I also ran the RCAs and I ran the remote wire, but I honestly think, guys, I'm gonna have to do a CD player in here. I don't think the Max Speed and Rides unit is gonna work. I can't even find the freaking uh, RCA cables on this thing. I think I think they came separate and you could plug it in. And I don't know what the heck I did with them because of course I didn't use them at the time. So uh, Pioneer is like the best way if you want like sound quality. So I may just, I may just say screw it. Grab like a, a basic Pioneer from Walmart, like the, like the $70, $80 one that's got all the preamp settings and stuff on it. You just grab that and run that thing because I do have the control panel with a voltmeter and everything. That's like half DN size too. So really I need the one DN, and then I could squeeze that half DN controller unit right up under it, and that could take up the where that TV is sitting at. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just brainstorming as I work, guys. All right, boys. Quick tip. If you stripping wire, especially stuff bigger than like four gauge, this is uh, one out right here. 
you can use the insulation that you stripped off as like a rubber gasket to kind of elevate your amps so they're not physically touching the wood itself or whatever you're mounting them to. It also serves a little bit of vibration dampening, but this isn't an amp that has, it doesn't have any ventilation really under the bottom. It's got most of it as a three-way fans pull the air across. But anyway, I mounted up. I've always done it, so that's what I did here. Um, just a little quick tip, but Guys, as for the van, I know it doesn't look like I've gotten much done since you last saw or last update, but guys, I had a freaking amazing breakthrough when trying to figure out where to put the amp at. Something just had me lift this seat up. I guess I was trying to get room to see about measuring to make like an amp rack back here. And then as I'm looking under the seat, I'm like, bro, I feel like it'll fit right here, the long way between the seat. Guys, it does. It freaking does. It even clears this bar by a mile, and that bar doesn't move once this is locked down. It doesn't drop from weight in the seat or anything, so it's never gonna touch the amp. So it's freaking amazing, guys. So that's what I've got planned. I've got the amp mounted on a piece of wood. That's gonna elevate it, that's gonna keep it in case the van ever has like water issues or anything, we don't want the amp laying directly on the carpet or on the floor. So I gotta elevate it up off the floor with the wood. That's gonna go right here. Not too sure, sure exactly how I'm gonna attach it, but I'm probably gonna do something pretty simple, maybe like double-sided tape or something, just so I know it doesn't slide back and forth. It's not really any force gonna be lifting it up off of the carpet, so it should be fine like that. I also cut a little slot into the wood here because the amp is so long, it does have to sit quite a bit farther back so that when you got the seat down, it doesn't stick out and maybe someone's foot taps it or something. We definitely won't, don't want that issue either. So I cut this slot. That gives us plenty of room to slide the amp as far back as possible and still have room to run the hot wires and the ground wires up out of the hole down there to wherever, probably to like this shock tower and uh, maybe over to the other shop tower as well. So we got plenty of room there too. Also, I did buy this neat little crimper thing here, and uh, this works really good as far as crimping. I, I already tested it once because I was having issues with trying to get the uh, crimps tight enough on this zero gauge. With the only thing I really have to crimp with are like regular crimpers, which bend easy, and then like vice grips. So I was trying everything, guys, but I could not get the crimp tight enough for it to um, like have a really secure crimp. This thing did amazing. I did one ground wire with it already. It works absolutely flawless. So this should get us by the rest of this install, but I do plan on buying a hydraulic unit like ASAP, they're only like 28 bucks on Amazon. I probably will end up getting one of those. I just trying to do everything with what I, what I can get locally and like right now so that we can continue to progress because I really want to try to get this thing playing. I also did a battery box. This is the top portion I just painted and there is the rest of it sitting over there. So we did do a battery box that hopefully should slide in the center between the seats. So we're gonna put the battery right in this area here. And so I wanted to put do like a rack so that it would be elevated enough to kind of keep it out of the way of, you know, like the kids and stuff when they're riding. So that's working. So we're making progress, boys. And here is a scary part with this stuff. So this part right here, always kind of it will get you if you ain't expecting it but this is the part that charges like the capacitors in the amp so when i touch this wire to this hot it's probably gonna spark here we go Woo! shit oh my god that shit is sketchy okay let me tighten this down okay so that is the first of two positives that has to go to the amp. 
That's why it sparked because it basically charged up all the caps inside of the amp and made them pretty much ready to, I guess, operate. So, uh, as you can see, I got a bunch of grounds. I already got two ran over here. I got one ran on that side as well. I'm going to run one more on that side over there. And then I'm going to go ahead right now, since I'm already doing them, and run that last positive up. That'll be both positives coming from the battery to the amp, which this is a dual input, which some people actually do for and use like the, the little this style like this and, and it's got, but it's got two of these on the back. Some people do that, man. That's just, it's all in what you want, man. I feel like it'll be fine with the dual inputs cause hell, the, the uh, DC 10K I had before didn't even have dual inputs. It just had the one like zero gauge positive and negative. So this is doing a lot better than that anyway. But uh, side note, I couldn't use these because they aren't long enough. The tear amps has like a little lip right that runs into this. And, and when you tighten it down, it basically tightens on this little lip thing here. So that's no bueno, that's not gonna work. So I just got them ran straight into the amp. Who gives a fuck, right? So I got the remote wire ran, I got the RCAs ran. Everything is pretty much there. Like once, basically once I run this last run of positive to the battery, the amp, well, it probably power on with one positive, but we'll power the amp on once just to see it come on and everything. And then from there, all that's left is the wiring of the subs, which isn't too bad. I also, in the back, made this extra panel here that goes all the way across. And then it got me thinking, now I kind of want to make another panel that kind of covers this gap up too. But again that'll be down the road but as you can see well you might can't tell but this is flush with the port it's not up higher and the port is not above it it's, it's perfectly like flush it meets smack smooth so that'll let the base travel out and come up better and um again i'll be painting all of this stuff at a later date too man right now I'm just trying to get everything working so that we can test this thing, see how it does. We still need the alternator, which should be here this week. And uh, we will be putting that in on video too. But the day, man, is Monday. And I'm at a rush to try to get this done and playing before this video is over with. So that being said, I'm going to keep on pushing. I will give you all another update as soon as I've gotten a lot farther. So it's pretty much back together, guys. I know this video has been all over the place, but guys, I just been trying to work and then it's been a couple days now and pretty much the whole family got sick. So my voice probably sounds a little different right now, but everything's in, it is playing. It's sounding really good, guys. I only have four screws in each sub right now. And that's because I wasn't sure if I don't know if this thing is quite wired the right way or not. So before I really put all how many screws, eight, whatever in there, I just did like a cross pattern. And um, what I want to do is get a fresh multimeter. The one I have is just old as crap. So I'm gonna get a fresh multimeter and I'm gonna test it and see because I, the way I have it wired, it should be reading exactly one of them. I have, I'm supposed to have four dual two ohm subs and I have them wired to where they all come together as a one ohm stable load, which is what the amp takes with no problems, one ohm. So trying to match everything the way the uh, the fragile tear amp doesn't go and protect and, and mess the F up. I'm telling y'all, nothing's ever easy, boys. Nothing is ever easy. So what you're looking at is my spacer for the lower bolt and if this works then we should be okay 
Hopefully also I'm trying to utilize the tensioner bolt so that we can put tension on the belt before we tighten it. If all of this works, we should be okay as far as on the mounting goes. But as you can see here, I do have it in the car and the lower bolt is through. It's just way too long now because the lower portion um, of the alternator itself doesn't, it, the bolt doesn't go through that, it goes through this bracket. So all this really, uh, the tensioner bolt is going through is like a bracket, which is like this wide and then the tensioner thing. So there's a little bit of non-thread there. So I'm trying to fill that void with this uh, old transmission bolt, but it's such a tight clearance that the bolt doesn't want to go over the the nut. I mean, the nut doesn't want to go over the bolt uh, because it's so close to the alternator. So I'm trying to flatten the side out, see if that'll work. Hopefully it does. Now that crap is hot, so I gotta wait for it to cool a little bit. But as you can see, I do have the new belt on, and it does look like there is quite a bit of tension that I can put on that thing. So guys, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. This works, and uh, then we will have it actually mounted, which would be cool. And then all we have to do is get those lugs they're talking about. We need an M8 lug, which I know is gonna be freaking difficult as hell to find. Hopefully Ace Hardware will have something though. If not, um, yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna drill something out and try to drill it to where it's the exact size of this boat. They say M8, so I might just get an M8 drill bit, open up a lug that isn't M8 and just go that route. Cause guys, this is just nonsense. I when I did the HHR, I do not remember this lug. This lug did not fit perfectly on the HHR. It just fit it, and once I tightened it down, the tightness of the bolt is what let it charge, and, I, and the Mac man never gave me a problem. So these guys really, I mean, it, it might well be fine, but they really kind of try to scare you into doing this because they're saying it, it will make the audience fail. And if it's that sensitive, then... I mean, what kind are we dealing with anyway, right? So that being said, we are making progress on the Brand X install. Hopefully, again, hopefully everything works. They got a rigorous setup. I got to start it, let it run for 10 minutes with no load. Um, and then from there, you can ease the load in. Got to keep a check on grounds. All the, it's just, it, they got this thing detailed. And I can't remember, maybe the Mech Man was the same way. I just didn't read the instructions or something. Got her running, she's charging. So, so far so good. I hope y'all enjoying the system thing, man. Again, they are really, really turned down. I have to break them in. I have to have the amp game set match to the head unit. All that's gotta take place, so. Until we do all that, we can't really hammer on it. But if y'all enjoying this content, man, make sure you smack the like button for me. Subscribe if you're new. I will catch y'all next time. Remember, guys, respect all bills. Peace out.